Second Chronicles 24. Joash was seven years old when he began to reign. Very young. We don't know how many years he was hid in the house of the Lord under the high priest. And he reigned 40 years in Jerusalem, 40 being the number of testing. His mother's name also was Zilba of Beersheba. And Joash did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, the good one, all the days of Jehoiada the priest. That's in a note. That's a note. All the days of Jehoiada. And after that, it's going to go sour. And Joash did that which was right inside the Lord all the days of Jehoiada the priest. And Jehoiada took for him two wives, and he begat sons and daughters. The high priest got him this wife. Got him two wives. Now God told in the law of the kings, you're not to multiply wives. And God never rebukes the kings who had multiple wives. But then again, it was trouble. But notice the priest has sent Joash to be the king. The priest has picked out the wives for him. And it came to pass after this that Joash was minded to repair the house of the Lord. That's good. And he gathered together the priests and the Levites. Remember, Levites and priests. Not all Levites are priests, but all priests are Levites. So he, he gathers the two bands of the Levites and said unto them, Go out unto the cities of Judah and gather all Israel money to repair the house of, of your God from year to year. Now look at that. You know, churches have collection plates, you pass up, they have boxes, and we're going to see that here in a moment. The king says, go out to the streets, go out to the houses, go knock on their doors and say, we need money to fix the house of the Lord. Now, this is not Gentile, this is Jewish, this is Israel, they're in their land, they have an established building, not like so in the New Testament. There's supposed to be one nation under God, not America. And the money's not coming in to fix the house. So he says, you go knock on the door. And see that ye hasten quickly the matter. Howbeit the Levites hasten it not. They didn't listen. They didn't listen to the king. And I would assume, and I'm going to assume that Jehoiada has some part in this with the king. I mean, Joash would have to heard somehow that, you know, the house of the Lord, the temple, it's got problems. We need money to fix them problems. Now, I've been, I grew up in the Catholic Church, and I remember their little flyer every week. And they would have advertisements in the back of the, you know, you pay for the ad. That's how part of the church funded their way. And then they would put an ad in there, we need a new roof, it costs X amount of dollars, and, you know, people gave. And the king called for Jehoiada, the chief. That's the chief priest. Hey, you know, I sent your Levites out. You need money for the temple. They're not doing their job. He goes right to their boss. And said unto him, Why hast thou not required the Levites to bring in out of Judah and out of Jerusalem the collection? That's the first time that word shows up. Jehoiada, you're in charge of those people. I gave them orders. You're the chief. Get to work. So collection, yeah, it has to do with money for the church. Here, the building needs repairs. And when you give money to the church, it's not... Well, I've seen some churches where they got big, fancy cars in the parking lot. That, that's nonsense. I know some preachers where I grew up in... I mean, they were known for their, their loftiness. They were known for their high money and their suits and their gold teeth and stuff like that. That's foolish. But your average church that loves the Lord and wants to do right has to pay the AC, has to pay the heating, has to pay the lights, the sewer, the water. And somebody's got to pay for the gasoline for the, for the lawn. Somebody's got to pay for that. And the roof eventually is going to need work. It, and the pastor needs to be paid. 
and a church that has the love of God doing right, the money is not going to be blown or wasted. And yet today we are in a church age, glad to see it's just blown. And the Bible said, oh, we are so rich. And God says, no, you're poor and miserable. So collection in the Bible, the first time that word shows up, does have to do with money and giving. According to the commandment of Moses. So Moses commanded to give money. The servant of the Lord and of the congregation of Israel for the tabernacle of witness. For the sons of Athelia, I say her name all the time. Now watch what, not her, her sons. This is how she raised her children. That wicked woman, ooh, that's a great title, that broke up the house of God. Her sons did it. The damage has been done, the damage that needs repair is the sons of this wicked woman. And I believe I was going to look it up, I forgot to do it. I think Jezebel is called the wicked woman too. That wicked woman. And also all the dedicated things of the house of the Lord did they bestow upon Baal. Now see the Baal? That's the head God. You see the I am? That's all the little gods. Baal got together with Ashtoreth. Baal got together on his, on his sleigh in this red suit and came across upon Easter and fertilize her eggs by having chocolate to get in the mood to make little gods called Baal. That's what it is. And sometimes when you look at Easter and you look at December 25th, that's exactly nine months. Some, some years. Kind of interesting. And at the king's commandment, again, they made a chest. A wooden chest. And set it without at the gate of the house of the Lord. So it's not in the house of the Lord. It's outside where all the people will come, where they bring their offerings, they bring their animals, where they would come to do the service to the Lord. Here is a chest. And they made a proclamation through Judah and Jerusalem to bring into the Lord the collection that Moses, the servant of God, laid upon Israel in the wilderness. All right, we're not going door knocking no more. You're going to have to come to the temple. Now, why is this relevant? Are they not supposed to come to the temple? They tried bringing the church to the doorstep. It didn't work. They, The people came into the church, their building, give. There are probably people they went knocking on their door. They didn't have nothing to do with the temple. Those who do love the Lord, those who do want to do right, those who are coming to, to do right, they would see the despair. They would see the ruins. And their heart would be, okay, I'll give. And all the princes and all the people rejoiced and brought in and cast into the chest until they had made an end. Now it came to pass that at what time the chest was brought into the king's office by the hand of the Levites, they brought that chest into the king's office, into the king. When they saw that there was much money, the king's scribe, that's the recorder, he's the one that writes things down, he's the one in charge of recording. We're probably reading the account from the king's scribe right now. We're probably reading what the king's scribe wrote. And the high priest officer came and emptied the chest. So it's not Jehoiada, it's the man Jehoiada is put in charge. Like Joseph was put in charge upon the first stop. Emptied the chest and took it and carried it to the place again. Thus they did day by day and gathered money in abundance. And the king and Jehoiada, here he is now, gave it to such as did the work of the service of the house of the Lord, and hired masons, stonework, and carpenters, woodwork, to repair the house of the Lord, and also such as wrought iron, iron workers, brass, to mend, that's the first time that word shows up, the house of the Lord. So what was his money for? To fix the house of the Lord. So the workmen wrought, and the work was perfected by them, 
and they set the house of God in its in his his his. Who the feminist movement won't like that? His state. God is a man. Jesus Christ is a man. And strengthen it. And when they had finished it, they brought the rest of the money. Man, they had so much money. They fixed the house of the Lord. They brought it back the way it was. And there's still more money. Before the king of Jehoiada, whereof were made vessels for the house of the Lord, even vessels to minister, and to offer with all, and spoons, and vessels of gold and silver. And they offered burnt offerings in the house of the Lord continually all the days of Jehoiada. All the, knows that? All the days of Jehoiada. That's a, per, that's a perfect remark for this chapter. So they got bowls and plates and they bought the animals and wood, whatever they need, whatever the extra money. But Jehoiada waxed old, as we all do, and was full of days and he died. 130 years old was he when he died. And they buried him in the city of David among the kings. So he's buried with royalty because he had done good in Israel both toward God and toward his house. Now after the death of Jehoiada, here we go, came the princes of Judah and made all bents to the king. You know, how king, glory to you king, how great thou art, www.king.com and all oh, glory to the king. How wonderful you are king. So remarkable. Then the king hearkened unto him. <laughs> I like that. Getting a little prideful. And they left the house of the Lord God of their fathers. He was just fixing it. And served groves. Well, we know God doesn't like the groves. We know God's against the groves. We know kings that come in there and tore down the groves. And idols. We definitely know idols are wrong. And wrath came from came upon Judah and Jerusalem for this their trespass. Age of worship. God brings wrath. God hates it. Can't you get it straight? So what did we get from Joash so far? You can do everything right before the eyes of the Lord. And you may be bound to fall in your life. You're not always going to be super Christian. You may fall. And there are a lot of people out there that have a Jehoiada in their life. I'm going to say this. I know this for a fact. When their pastor dies or leaves that church for another church, they're going to die and they're going to go into the world. I've seen it. I witnessed it. They're not serving the Lord. They're serving a man. When Jehoiada died, Joash, that's it. His spiritual life died. No one to tell me what to do. No one to how to guide me. No study. No nothing of myself so I can grow as a Christian after my spiritual leader died. And just go back with the flow. And then he got in with a group of people, the princes of Judah, who are wrong. He all the time say, listen, you guys get out of here. I'm not having no more fellowship with you. I'm done with you. I'm not going your ways. I'm going to serve God the best I can. And right now, if I don't know much, I'm going to ask God for much. But he got with the wrong crowd. As with his father, as with Jehoshaphat, got in with the wrong crowd. So his grandfather, his father, his grandfather, his great grandfather has already set forth in Joash to be the wrong company. And the wrong company will get you to sin. That's why God teaches separation, and it's not a popular subject today. But it is a subject, and it's in the Bible, and it's in the New Testament. What do you have to do with the cups of the devils or at the table of the Lord? Either you're going to serve God, or you're going to serve the devil. You're going to love God or love the man. You can't serve both. Yet ye sent prophets to them. Look at that. God sent men. God sent preachers. God sent people to the king and to the people to bring them again unto the Lord. You guys are doing right. You guys are sinning. You guys are not doing what God wants you. God is angry with you. Repent. Turn. 
or be destroyed. And with Jeremiah and Isaiah, they are street preaching. They are coming in the king's face. And he sent prophets to them to bring them again to the Lord. Prophet, if you don't get right, this is what's going to happen. Tell them the future. And they testified against them, Judah and the king, but they would not give ear. The princes and the king. And the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, looking at capital S of God, came upon Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada. There's a high priest's son. God said, okay, if you're not going to listen to the prophets, I'm going to send you the son of the man that took care of you. Let's see if this works. The son of Jehoiada, the priest, which stood above the people and said unto them, Thus saith God, Why transgress ye the commandments of the Lord, that ye cannot prosper? You don't preach nice messages. You preach hate in hell. Hate in hell. You're screaming at the people. You're turning people off. Well, so did Zechariah, the son of Ze Jehoiada. But it's not a hate message. It's a message from God that you're sinning. You're doing wrong. Get right. And these people in approximately 850 B.C. are acting the same way the people in 2019 act. But I hope they don't do this. Because you have forsaken the Lord, you have also forsaken you. Ooh. God hates the sin but loves the sinner. God said, no, I left you. You left me, I leave you. And it kind of weird when you preach the gospel of Jesus Christ at that moment, you hear how to be saved. You hear what Jesus Christ has done for you. And you walk away from that. You don't do what God told you to do. There's no more love there. John 3 says there's condemnation. If you don't have the son, John the Baptist said, you have the wrath of God. They got the wrath of God. These nice little sayings. They may be nice, but they may be Bible wrong. But watch this. And they conspired against him and stoned him with stones at the commandment of the king. At the command, Joash said, go kill that man. The son of the man that helped me. Kill him. This is the same way they want to try to kill Jesus a couple times with stones. One time they actually picked up stones. So there it is. The commandment of the king in the court of the house of the Lord. The guy is in the temple. He is preaching in the temple as Jesus did. And he said, kill him. Shut him up. Marvel not the world hates you. All they that live godly shall suffer persecution. Thus Joash the king remembered not the kindness which Jehoiada his father had done to him, but slew his son. They killed the son of Jehoiada. The king ordered, and God says, you're the murderer, Joash. And Joash did not lift one finger. Can you imagine the murder count of one man named Adolf Hitler if he did not get right and got saved before he died? Though I had, what I've heard, I've never heard that he ever lifted a finger against one of the people, the Jews or anybody in those concentration camps. I have heard not one account where he did it personally, but boy, he's going to be charged for all of it. Every single death, not in, including the Jews, everyone that died in World War II because of that man, he's going to be charged. Thus Joash the king remembered not the kindness of Jehoiada, his father, had done to him, but slew his son. And when he died, he said, the Lord, the Lord look upon it and require it. When Zechariah dies, he says, the Lord look upon you. And he had a better statement than Stephen had a better statement. 
Jesus Christ had a much better statement. Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. Stephen, Lord, receive my spirit and then, you know, forgive them. Zechariah looks at the king, looks at the people. The Lord requite you. Lord, get you back. And it came to pass at the end of the year that the hosts of Syria came up against him. And they came to Judah and Jerusalem and destroyed all the princes of the people from among the people. There they are. There they go. They're the ones that ruined the king. God says, they're dead. They're the ones that probably killed Zechariah. God says, you're dead. He died of murder in the Old Testament outside of David. You went to hell. You know what the Syrians are? When you run back to a man named Abram and Sarai, and his father Tamar, when they came out of the land, they came out of Ur Chaldee, that's Syrian territory. The Bible records that Abram, the Bible records that Rebecca, the Bible records Jacob were Syrians. God is sending their own family into them. Their own family, their own kinship is taking care of the business. And sent all the spoil of them into the kingdom of Damascus. Paul was on the road to Damascus. For the army of the Syrians came with a small company of men. Not a big company, just a small one. Notice how the Holy Spirit said that. Size don't matter now. You're against me. Syrians, don't even. Just send a small company. Uh, keep everyone else home. Because I am with you, Syria. I am not with them. So just send a small company. And the Lord delivered a very great host into their hand, including the Syrians won. Judah and Jerusalem lost because they have forsaken the Lord God of their fathers. Go back to the groves and go back to the idols. That's how God feels. They're not aids to worship. So they executed judgment against Joash. They're killing and they're taking spoil. And when they, when they were departed from him, parentheses, here's a note, for they left him in great diseases. That's a kind of interesting statement. If I were to read that like it is, and I could be wrong, and if I'm wrong, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. The Syrians came in with diseases. And those diseases were passed on to the people of Judah and Jerusalem. And that's happened. A lot of Europeans were killed when they came to the New World, America, because they caught the diseases that they weren't prone to. What's that? Yes. Yep, Europeans brought, the, brought their diseases to the land. So if I'm taking this right, and I can be wrong, I've been wrong. It looks like they left Judah and Jerusalem, not only with dead people, not only people injured and maimed and, and, I don't know, hospitalized, if that's the word to use, but they left people sick. Maybe they left them without food. Maybe there's just people dying in the streets. And they, But it says, when they were departed, the, the Syrians, from him, Joash, for they left him great diseases. His own servant uh -oh, conspired against him, Joash, for the blood of the... Look at that. What's it say? Sons. Going back to verse 20, it says, Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada. And they killed him for preaching. The Holy Spirit says, sons of Jehoiada priest. So not just Zechariah was killed. Did he physically kill the son? Or did he think killing the son? Maybe he has such a rampant against Jehoiada's son, Zechariah. I'm going to kill that whole family. That's it. You're guilty. And we've seen that in the Bible. But notice sons and mark that S. And then run that back to verse 20. Where recorded one son physically killed. 
and slew him upon his bed. David has a bunch of men and they go to Ishamar, whatever his name is. He's ruling half the land for his father Saul. And a bunch of men went into his bedroom. He's sleeping on the bed, chopped off his head and brought the head to David and said, we killed your enemy. David's like, you had the nerve to slay him in his bed? Take that guy's head off and sell. Take that head and bury it with the body. Saul, King Saul was so wicked. He said, David is sick in bed. He's not feeling well. Bring that bed in, in, in him and let me kill him on his bed. To be killed in your bed was not a biblical thing. It was not a thing of standard. They took Joash and they slayed him on his bed and he died. And they buried him in the city of David. But they buried him not in the sepulchres of the king. But Jehoiada got buried with the kings, not the king. See how angry God gets? And these are they that conspired against him. And the Holy Spirit is going to name them. You ought not to name names. Zabad, the son of Shemaiah, and Ammonitus, that is Moab, I mean, that's uh, Lot's son. Ammonitus, that's a woman. One of the men in the book of Judges says, hey, kill me. Abimelech says, kill me. At least they say, I died by a woman in battle. J.L. kills a man in battle. How? You got killed by a woman. That's weak. That's not a good, a good battle tactic that you were killed by a woman. And Zehudabad, the son of Shimareth, a Moabitess. Joash gets killed by the two sons of Lot. Two incestual relationships with his daughters. Here are the two men here, and they're the two that came in and killed him upon his bed. Now concerning his sons, Joash, and the greatness of the burdens laid upon him, and the repairing of the house of God, behold, they are written in the story of the book of the Kings. He did do good, but he went sour. And Amaziah, his son, reigned in his stead. So the Bible records there was some good in him, but he lost it. And we ought not to get our head in the clouds, well, look, I'm a wonderful Christian, how great I am, and then how great the fall goes. Just because you're saved, just because you're right with the Lord today, just because you're doing what you should be doing, does not mean that you're going to be doing it tomorrow. Lord, hopefully that we do stay faithful, and we still do right, but we're prone to fall. 